In this first unit we shall be dealing with just the basics of PC assembly, the terminology, recognition of the components and how some of the devices are connected to the motherboard. In addition, if you are following this course practically, then you should watch the first few video lessons to avoid damaging the components. The very first item we shall be looking at is the computer case that houses all the components. They can come in many different shapes and sizes. Here we shall be looking at possibly the most common one found today. With this particular case you can get access to the inside by removing two screws that secure each side panel. Then sliding the panel off towards you. You may find in the case some packing material like here. This is used to protect the side panels. This case is called an ATX MIDI tower. ATX or Advanced Technology Extended is the form factor. A form factor relates to certain dimensions within the case. This will become clearer later. But this case will house a motherboard with the same form factor. So it too will need to be an ATX form factor motherboard. We shall now familiarise ourselves with some of the different parts of the case. Be aware that not all cases are the same. The specification of the case will depend upon what the computer will be used for. This case has four five and a quarter inch spare bays. Five and a quarter refers to the width of the bay. You may have noticed that each one has a panel. These can be removed to allow different devices to be fitted. Two such devices are an extra cooling fan and DVD ROM drive, also known as an optical drive. Just below this you will find one three and a half inch bay. Once again, this refers to the width of the bay and also has a panel that can be removed. At one time they housed the floppy disk drive for many many years but because the capacity of them is extremely low you will very rarely find them fitted. Another item that could be fitted is a card or memory reader. The one shown here can read many different types. It also contains a USB port. Once again we are looking at the terminology and recognition of the components. We are at this point not concerned how these items work. On the front of the case you will find a large button called the power button. It is important to understand that this does not always remove all the power from the computer. Once again this will become clearer as we proceed. The smaller button below this is the reset button and its function is to clear the memory and reboot the machine forcibly. Normally only used if the computer freezes or locks up and you are unable to use it. Below this is a power LED or power light emitting diode. This is similar to a light bulb but has a much higher visual properties and uses much less power. At the rear of the computer you will find in most cases a power supply. This one is held in place with four screws. It should be pointed out that A. Not all cases are supplied with an internal power supply and B. Which is very important. Power supplies do vary in different power consumptions. The internal power supply has a main switch. With the O depressed then the power supply is isolated from the mains. So even if you press the front power button nothing will happen. Just below this is the main socket and uses what is known in the industry as a mains kettle lead. All power supplies need some sort of cooling and this power supply is no exception. It has an internal fan. Also found on the rear of the case is a number of cutouts. These enable the user to plug in various devices such as keyboard, mice, speakers etc. into the motherboard. Some cases have facilities for an extra fan to aid cooling of the system like the one shown here. These panels can be removed to enable expansion cards to be fitted to the motherboard. At this point you should fix an anti-static wrist strap around your wrist and attach the crocodile clip to the case. If you do not own an anti-static wrist strap you can discharge yourself by touching the metal chassis of the computer case. An anti-static wrist strap or ESD wrist strap or ground bracelet is an anti-static device used to prevent electrostatic discharge 
by safely grounding a person working on electronic equipment. It consists of a stretchy band of fabric with fine conductive fibres woven into it. The fibres are usually made of cotton or carbon filled rubber. The strap is bound with a stainless steel clasp or plate. The wrist wrap is often used in conjunction with an anti-static mat on the workbench or a special static dissipating plastic laminate on the workbench surface. That's it for this first introduction of the hardware. The rest of the case will be explored as we fit the devices into it, creating a fully working computer.